previously on Restoration. After successfully clearing out the Griffins in the market, the team enjoyed some needed downtime. Chaz and Gwen bonded over familiars and equipment upgrades. Meanwhile, Serathiel's checkup revealed a break in the suppression mark, and the administrant issued an important warning. So we left off with Chaz being weird and then not being weird at all about Gwen's spider familiar, Roger. I'm sure that won't be anything. So we are starting off a day or two later. You've probably just been enjoying the downtime, enjoying not having to deal with griffins and creepy orbs of ectoplasm in libraries. But I'll let you guys tell me. Yeah, speak for yourself. That was the first thing Serathiel has been allowed to do in fucking months. This is fair. Serathiel probably enjoyed that a lot more than any of the others. So it's been a couple days. Things have been kind of quiet. There's been some teams coming in and out, both Aptap teams and members of the Spell Guard. As you may or may not know, the Spell Guard is one of the elite guard forces of the city of Silvery Moon. Serathiel does not know that. I figured he wouldn't. <laughs> the spell guard are mages who use their magic to help protect the city. They've been called in to kind of help out with some of this research around what happened with the bombing. It's been kind of quiet, which is nice. Things are a little relaxing. Serathiel's had time to practice, and everybody kind of likes when Serathiel trains. Oh, yes. Yeah, he has an audience pretty much constantly when he trains. <laughs> right. <laughs> But Birnan comes down and interrupts one of the training sessions because you have been called up to the administrant's office. Oh, he gets a sinking feeling right away. Oh, let me rewind. He's actually just looking for Chaz right now. We're not looking for Serathiel or Gwen. Chaz is exactly where you expect a drow to be, which is outside in the sun with his sun hat on. (laughs) (laughs) Because Serathiel's training, I'm guessing. Exactly. Sipping a mimosa, he's like, mm, yes, mm-hmm. Vernon sighs and heads over. <laughs> yeah, Serathiel, like, when he leveled up last time, he got the feat Remarkable Athlete, uh, which improved his running long jump. So I feel like that's probably what he's been doing lately. Ooh. And he's all sweaty. And yeah, Chaz is just like fanning himself like, oh my. Vernon <laughs> uh, shoving everything down under a thin layer of professionalism. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so Vernon heads over to Chaz. Chaz, uh, do you have a minute? Chaz looks over at Viernan, over his rose-colored sunglasses. You want me to stop watching this? <laughs> it better be good. Not my idea. It's the administrant's. Ah, well, I can always make time for the administrant in that case. <laughs> good. Come on, let's head over. Instead of heading over to her temporary office, you actually head toward the main building. A lot of it has been stabilized. There's not any worries about actually going into the building anymore. You know, yeah, there's parts of it that are definitely roped off, but it's remarkably in one piece. Uh, Vernon, you are so lucky. You get to see him sweaty and probably naked all the time. How do I become a handler? You wouldn't pass the test, I'm afraid. That's... Very fair, you know, I understand. I am I am a genius, just, you know, not in that department. <laughs> I mean, you probably could do anything you set your mind to, but it's not really your personality, no offense. Mm, understandable. I'll leave it to the professional, then. <laughs> He's just kind of ignoring the comment about sweaty and naked Seraphiel. 
and just, like I said, being professional. Chaz just looks over and sees his just sort of brushing it off and he's like, oh, oh, we're going to be like that. All right. And he straightens an imaginary bow tie. All right. My boring persona is on. Go ahead. He's a person too. He deserves just as much respect as you or Gwen. Of course he does. I'll have you know that I look at him very respectfully, Viernan. <laughs> Viernan just like raises an eyebrow practically to his hairline and doesn't comment. You get up to where the administrant's office is. It's in one of the sections that had been not really roped off, but had been closer to the bombed section. You are shown in by her assistant. Oh, Chaz and Viernan, it's good to see you. Well, good is not exactly the word. The administrant just kind of gestures around the room. For somebody who is normally so fastidious about her organization, it is a mess. Not anything you would normally expect to see. Looks like it's probably been ransacked. Oh dear, what happened here? Well, that's what I've called you up about. Take a seat, I guess. Verna takes one of the seats off to the side and not in the, like, crazy section of the room. He's not a huge fan of it, but he's like, all right, I guess I will sit here. <laughs> he doesn't like sitting in a messy space. <laughs> well, as you can see, somebody got in here last night sometime. We thought that we had secured the building, but clearly something was not. Now, what I'm going to tell you both is very... Sensitive, you understand. It seems that they were after some of our personnel files and also some of the artificing notes. Oh, that definitely rattles Chaz. Oh, really? What exactly has gone missing? <sighs> well, and she glances over at Viernan. Unfortunately, Serathiel's file and yours. Serathiel's files? Why? Who who would want those? Right. I, I mean, with all due respect, I can understand why one would want mine. He gestures to himself like, obviously, like, everyone's racist, I get it, but why would they want those? Well, Serathios makes a little bit of sense. I suppose the rest of ours, because we work with him, but who could have even gotten in here? Who could have done that? I mean, the, the spell guard's been here, and I assume our own teams. Surely you're not thinking that someone inside app-tapped at this. The administrant just kind of gives you a look, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> am I saying that? I'm not not saying that. Great, I thought I was done with this sort of infighting. Well, we suspect that it has something to do with those warlocks that you mentioned in your report, Vernon. that uh, there was some new group on the edge of the city. But we don't have any clues, and like you said, it um, would appear to be someone with access. The wards that we set up were quite tight, and I don't know how they could have gotten in otherwise. Hmm. What else do we know? Chaz is like making mental notes like, okay, the evidence is thus. So the evidence that you have, somebody is looking for information on Serathiel and your team. They are looking at the artificing files. You don't know specifically which files yet. That could cover a lot of stuff. We don't know if this is something for AppTap yet or if this is like something specific. Other things you know, basically who probably had access would be like the administrant herself, her assistant, the AppTap teams, the spell guard, but it seems weird for them to be involved and they weren't here overnight. They were here during the day. And I think that's what you know right now. Yeah, I feel like Chaz is like going through that list too, like mentally. He's like, no, I mean, it doesn't make sense for the spell guard, but I'm not ruling it out. Hmm. It's highly unlikely, but I suppose I can ask my sister. She works with them. I can find out who was who was working here last night. Aren't you connected, V? <laughs> with enough siblings? Anyone would be. That's true, I forgot. You do have a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're happy to help out. I mean, do you, you don't mind if we use Gwen on this, do you? And like, I don't know how much help Serathio would be. Obviously, I'm going to keep anything about his file from him. But what do you want us to do? 
the administrant just leans heavily against her desk, careful not to disturb any of the piles, but a lot of them have already been cataloged, and that's how they know which files are missing. Well, um, if we do have a mole, then I think I would like your team to help us ferret them out. Oh, good. I am very stealthy. He sort of like <laughs> taps his his belt where the uh, button to have his armor show up is, you know, like, hey. I appreciate the buy him. Virnan, he just nods like, yeah, obviously. <laughs> of all of you, he actually knows a little bit about what's in that file. Not all of it. He's never right. seen the full file, but he's seen enough of it to know that this is a big deal. Chaz is more out of like hero worship. Oh man, I really want to impress. And also I really like sleuthing out things. You wrap up your meeting with the administrant and you're going to head back down. Probably it sounds like to find Gwen. Because Virnan thinks that maybe one of Gwen's advisors or professors can help with a tracking spell of some sort. You know, it doesn't seem like they left anything, but who knows. All right, so where do we find you, Gwen? Oh, I'm in the library. I'm always in the library. Just like Baku. Oh, what a baby. What do you think the chances are that I was I was able to sweet talk my way into the, the library that we had in the first episode? Because I, I feel like that's what he would have done. <laughs> he's got like just like not that much shame and he's like he loved that place and he was like well now i've got an in i think it hasn't quite been processed yet it's it's been a little too quick oh most things like that it, it will take a little while to get you in i will tell you that i show up there every day <laughs> i'm just checking on the status of my application has it been approved i just wanted to check in and see this is the status have you have you looked up Gwyneth? have you looked up the name Gwyneth? The staff have come to know you, and like several of them just shove somebody else into the path uh, when they see you coming now. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's fair. All right, so we're going to grab Seraphiel on the way then. Yeah, you, you, come, you come into his bedroom. His bedroom door, by the way, does not lock. Oh, uh, no. It's not a thing that he's allowed. Uh, so he comes out. He's got a towel around his waist, fresh out of the shower, because I enjoy tormenting him every <laughs> night. <laughs> Chaz is like a little bit disturbed. He's like, I have, a, I have the alarm spell on my laboratory, but okay. Oh, also, oh, oh, <laughs> hello. <laughs> Viernan just kind of elbows you. Yes, professional, indeed. Gosh, <laughs> V, be, be professional. Stop ogling the boy, V. Sarathiel kind of waits for you two to finish, and then he's like, what What are you doing here? We have a new mission, Sarathiel. We need to check some things out. All right. No, he, he does not ask questions. He's like, okay. He goes and like steps into his walk-in closet to get dressed, his usual attire. Not out of any modesty, just to be closer to the clothes. Modesty is another thing that he really doesn't have access to. <laughs> not with his life. We'll wait in the hall for you. If you insist. chess. I'm following. He's like trying to look behind, like over V's shoulder. They're like, doo doo doo. He's used to getting dressed in a hurry, so he comes back out. He still smells like soap and his hair is still wet, but he's ready to go. We head over to the vault stages because, again, we just make the leap that that's probably where you are, Gwen. Fair enough. Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely at the front desk. I would like to think that everyone's hiding from me, and so I've just been like <laughs> stalking around the front desk for like a good hour now. Hello, just checking in. Just, you know, it's okay. I'll be here all day. And I just like hang out on the table. Oh, just be careful. They do actually have guards of their own and will escort you out. <laughs> <laughs> I just, they just have to, as soon as they politely tell me to leave, I'll leave. I'm just want somebody to answer my question about if my application has been approved. All right. So we find you and Viernan, who actually has access to the vault, manages to get a meeting room that he can brief you guys in. How did you, how long did it take you, Viernan? Viernan, I have to know, how long was your application approved? Because I know it takes a long time, but it's been like three days and that's a long time. Okay. It's basically an eternity. My fiance works in the Map House, which is their affiliate group. So it's a little easier for me. Oh my goodness. Connections. I look at him in horror, nepotism. Yeah, Chaz looks at Gwen. He's like, really, really, he's so connected. Like, unbelievable. Also, I've lived here a while longer than you, Gwen. I just, it's not fair. I just like sort of like sulk into a seat. Right, not just not the spell guard and also the Vault of Sages. Just where, where don't you have your fingers, V? Hmm. Seriously, though, he does have a lot of connections, which is handy for you guys. Well, if he could use his connections to get me into the library, that'd be great. I just think it's fascinating because three-fourths of the party are elves and have, therefore, a completely different conception of time than you do, Gwen. Yes. <laughs> because three days? Yeah, waiting three years for an application is nothing yeah. for them. Like, they'd happily wait a decade. What's a decade? Who cares yeah. the fuck? Who cares? Yeah. 
It's like, I'm not as bad as a human, but I'm, I'm not nearly as good as the rest of y'all. Right. Also, he's 18, so, you know. <laughs> okay, so Vernon quickly gets you up to speed. There is, it sounds like, a mole in Aptap, and they either let someone in or they themselves ransacked the administrant's office last night. Wait, what? Sarthiel shifts uncomfortably. It gets better, I promise. Not only that, they stole our files. What? Like all, all of all of us here, yes, including you, Gwen. Why would anyone steal my file? I asked the same thing. <laughs> Not to omit anything? I mean, I understand, like, you and you and Chess, definitely you. I'm sure you have a really cool file. But me? That's so boring. <laughs> oh, man. They're in for a surprise. Who would do that? We are trying to find that out. Literally, right now. That's That's the job. Don't they have magical traps on the doors? I have a magical trap in my dorm room. Yeah, same, but that's why we assume it must be a mole, because they have access. Yeah, we're not sure how they did it, but nothing is infallible. I look around suspiciously at the, the rest of you, and I'm, I like lean into Chaz. Do you think this could be an inside job? That's literally what we said. That's what a mole is, Gwen. Okay, but like, inside this circle. Oh. Maybe it's Viernan. I'm looking at, suspiciously at Viernan and looking at Chaz, and I just raise one eyebrow and I like tap my forehead. You, you know what I'm talking about. And then I just sit back. Literally everyone can hear you whispering. Oh, shit, shit. We're all elves, Gwen. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean it, Virden. Anyways, um... No offense taken. I mean, I did not do it, but... That's exactly what the traitor... Anyways. Well, where were you last night? I was here. You can ask the staff. And I have a fiancé who can vouch for me, so let's just assume it wasn't anyone in this room. So I look back at, like, Chaz, because, you know, you're my mentor and the person I look up to. How do we start looking for this? I don't, I don't know what to do. That's the entire point of this mission. And he looks at Vernon like, right? We were hoping that maybe one of your professors might be able to come up with some kind of tracking spell. Or Chaz, if you could maybe modify something on one of the bracers, maybe? Hmm. Yeah, we, we use them to detect portals. We could maybe detect a trace of... I, I don't know. Yeah, I'm way ahead of you on that there, V. I was already thinking about it. <laughs> Gwen would know that, so he'd be like, oh man, yeah, no, I've got a divination professor that I'm sure could help us out. Okay, well, I guess let's start there, and unless, Chaz, do you need your lab to do anything? Out of character, I rearranged some spells specifically for bloodhounding, if you will, sleuthing. There's locate object, which is kind of... I mean, that could maybe work if we're trying to locate the file. Locate object, I'm pretty sure, has a little range of a thousand feet. Well, as a benevolent DM, I might allow Chaz to do something to boost that through the bracer. Also, in theory, if I have a cool-ass divination professor, presumably they would have like access to more powerful magic or something. Mm -hmm. Or the two of them together. It has to be so, so the locate object spell. It has to be something you've seen up close. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, have any of us seen the files up close? <laughs> Viernan's seen at least part of Serathiel's file. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it sounds like we're going to head over to meet up with one of his professors. Yes. As we're like walking to find his professor, Serathiel is just kind of idly asking him, so why am I here for this? Well, you, you, do you think I'll actually be able to help? Because yesterday I forgot what a window was. You forgot what a window was? It's no, Gwen, it's fine. Don't You don't, don't know what a, it. It's a, it's a square between the... No, okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> he will not remember this. It's fine. Okay. okay. No, he says, I did remember eventually. It just took me a okay. while. That's okay. But the reason I wanted you along on this is just in case we run into anything dangerous, we could use the muscle, frankly. Oh, all right, I suppose. And if you want to make an insight check, you're welcome to, but he is not lying to you. Chaz thumps Sarathiel on the back. We like having you along, don't we, Gwen? So much fun. He says, really? I've really gotten that vibe from you, Chaz. No offense. It really seems more like you just like having me physically present to stare at me. Oh, oh he's got you. No. I mean, that's definitely a plus. Also, how did you know that? It's hard not to notice. Most people do it all the time. 
it's very difficult to not be aware of how much and how frequently it happens constantly all the time. Fiona just kind of gives both of you, or mostly Chaz, a look at this, like, see? All the time. How unprofessional of you, Viernin, to do this all the time. <sighs> Viernin rolls his eyes so hard you can hear them again. Chaz puts up his hands like, all right, all right, I'm, I'm, go- I'm going to behave. He says, I really don't like it, but I don't think there's very much I can do. I'm not really, he's like rubbing the side of his neck. He's like, I'm not really allowed to go anywhere or do anything about it. Oh, but now you are. You have official permission to go places with us. Well, no, I'm allowed to accompany Viernin and you two. I'm not allowed to leave. I'm not allowed to go anywhere or do anything on my own volition. This feels troublingly philosophical. I'm just... Am I... Am I... He looks at Viernin. Viernin, am I a prisoner? I just... It just occurs to me that I can't... I'm not allowed to leave the Aptat building without permission. I'm not... I have a mother, but I've never met her. I don't know where I'm from. It's complicated, Sarathiel. How is the answer to are you a prisoner complicated? It's a yes or no question, isn't it? V is definitely thinking how to respond to this because his job can be on the line if he answers this wrong, which is not good news for the boy. While this is happening too, like Chaz is really freaking out very visibly. He's like, can't... I never thought about it, but he can't. Really? It's not that black or white. You're not, you're not a prisoner, and I have been advocating for you to have more freedoms than- But if I want to just leave Aptap, I can't. No. So how am I not a prisoner? If any of us just wanted to leave Aptap, we couldn't. We signed all sorts of things. There's a lot of confidential knowledge that it holds. Oh, that's true. We did sign a lot of secret clauses. So you're not allowed to quit. Like, it's a good fucking point. Like, <laughs> like yeah, you are allowed to quit, actually. Sarathiel, can we talk about this later? It's, this is not really the best place. Uh, Sarathiel looks a bit crestfallen, but, you know, he follows directions. People tell him, his handler tells him to do something and he does it. So he just sort of drops his eyes and falls silent. I promise we will talk a little bit about it later, but this really is not. Yeah, 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 got it. And he he drops it. Well, that certainly set a mood, Viernin. I've just been like staring back and forth at everybody like, what? So Gwen, have you shown everyone your awesome new staff? I like perk up immediately. Chaz being allergic to feelings and emotion. (laughs) Like, oh no, things are serious. I hate it. Let's not. I, actually, you know what? I think I'm not like that, so I'm gonna like sort of like look around hesitantly at everybody else, being like, "Is now really the best?" Oh, it's the perfect time to do it. Okay, it's a really cool staff. I don't, I don't want to sound ungrateful, Chaz. I've been really excited to have it. He's, I mean, he's had it the entire time. He's like walking with it, but he presents it proudly, <laughs> pulls it out, and says, "Do you see it?" And now it looks like everything that Chaz owns. It's very nice, Gwen. It's got little gears on it, and when I do magic, it it helps. It makes it better. Yeah, it does. As Gwen is presenting his delightful new toy, Chaz is just like thumbs upping in the background. So he just spends the the entire rest of the trip just being like, and then if you look down closer, there's another gear. And then if you look at the further one in here, if you twirl, wait, no, Viernan, you have to touch it. No, come on, you have to like turn it around. You're not seeing the thing I'm talking about. He touched everything in my lab. I'm not everything, literally. I had to sanitize everything out. It was terrible. Fiona just kind of like reaches over and pats your back because he knows that's hard for you. He almost broke something. It's fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. It's fine. Yeah, Sir Athiel doesn't listen. He's all the way to find this professor. He's like rubbing his neck. You get over to the university pretty easily. So we are looking for your professor Albright. I'm interested to learn how a dwarf got to be a professor at Silvery Moon's university. So is Chaz. He's asking a lot of questions like, a dwarf? Really? That's fascinating. I thought so too. Because like, Aptap is more inclusive than most of the city. Like the city is open to a lot of people, but it is primarily an elven city. So it's just interesting. I think, you know what, based on that, 
maybe he's just like a, a he's not a very typical dwarf and so he likes like the rooftop thing and he's like that's why he moved to silvery moon is because he was like fucking caves man okay sounds good he is you think probably sounds like on an upper floor office it's a pretty good view and i'm gonna say that we're going again later in the afternoon evening range rather than during the day i'm very bad at divination this is not my thing this professor knows my name only because I'm constantly in his office for like for office hours like all the time and like it's like I'm very enthusiastic but I'm not very talented. Oh. Probably when he sees me coming, he's probably like, "Oh fuck." <laughs> he's probably had that conversation like, "You know, Gwen, I really think that you should just drop divination. It's totally fine. This would really be a pass fail course for you. You should just, I just need you to consider taking this pass fail." And I'm like, "No, I refuse." <laughs> he's like, "Oh no, I'm stuck with him. Great." <laughs> So important question, how many times have you taken his class? It's either my first or second semester. So it's, I, it hasn't been that many. But despite all of that, I'm still in his office a lot. You know exactly where to lead everybody then up towards the roof where you know that Professor Albright is probably having his office hours now because we're on the summer semester and he doesn't usually teach during the summers. Excellent. So you had him last semester and took it and didn't do great. Yep. Not great. Not great. <laughs> I guess I'm going to fling open his door and be like, Professor Albright! Gwen and Battlestar, what brings you? Oh my goodness, sir. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's so good to see you. Oh, we hung out so much last semester and it's been a really long time. I can't wait to have your class again next semester. Oh, it's going to be so great. I'm pretty sure this time I'm oh, going to get it down. Like, I've got the, I've been practicing please. my locate object and I know that it's like, I know I wasn't great last year, but this year, good this Gwen. year, I'm good. Gwen. Oh, sorry, sir. Chad's just like, oh boy. All right. Tap, tap. It's, you're good. Deep breaths. Deep breaths, Gwen. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know I prattle on. You couldn't have just contacted the TA to let me know? No? You have a TA? We're here on official app-tap business, Serathiel says, <laughs> desperately trying to cut this conversation short. Right, there is a reason we're here. So I, I feel like Vernon just kind of scoots around Gwen. Professor Albright, we're actually here on, as Serathiel says, uh, official business. I'm afraid that we need to get your assistance locating an object. Object location, that's no trouble at all, but AppTap isn't capable of doing that on their own. This is a special situation. We need something a little bit more advanced than the usual locate object spell. We need to increase the range, and Chaz here thinks he might be able to help boost it if we can uh, use your services. Indeed. Hmm. Well, I, I guess... What would you even be looking for? It's a very odd ask, you know. Professor, I mean, AppTap has worked with the Conclave before, and we've called on specialists, and yeah, Viernan's trying to pad his ego a little bit here, not doing great. <laughs> so tell me, Professor, what brings you to the university? Oh, and I think he finally notices that you're a drow, because he hasn't really noticed you yet, Chess. Uh, oh. Well, I was a bit of an outsider, as you can imagine. I uh, didn't really fit in in uh, the mm -hmm. city. I mm -hmm. came because I wanted to uh, study the stars and where better to study than Silvery Moon. Mm. Yeah, I, I can't relate at all to not fitting in. It's just nothing. I've, I've never experienced that before because I'm so outgoing and handsome. So, you know, but I, I feel for you. Chaz, tone down the sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> well, I... Be happy to help you, I suppose, uh, as long as it's nothing dangerous. <laughs> well. Oh. No, I can't guarantee that. Unfortunately, you know that we can never guarantee that. That's not something that AppTap usually guarantees. If we could guarantee it won't be dangerous, I wouldn't be here. The professor just kind of like looks you up and down. I was like, mm, yeah, okay, fair. You're the one that's, you know, armed to the teeth. <laughs> I'm definitely not here for my cunning insight, that's so... <laughs> All right, so it sounds like he is going to help you, and you don't even have to make a persuasion roll. Woohoo! Chaz, what ideas do you have to help boost this spell? Excellent. Well, <laughs> you may not be able to tell from my appearance, but I'm really smart. And... <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy. Actually, you know, I just, I just, I'm just really naturally good at everything I do. It's just, it's a curse, a burden sometimes, but... Chaz, point. Yep, yeah, sorry, sorry. The point. I am getting there. Thank you. This is why Chaz and I get along, <laughs> the babbling. 
Anyway, he's just talking about himself. He's like, all right, anyway, so as an artificer, we have these bracers and I can help you with the spell as well. So what happens is you and the professor spend a while talking theory. And so you usually don't do a lot of theory stuff. You just kind of point and the magic works. You know, you're doing like engineering and stuff Mm -hmm. and just kind of infusing magic while you do it. Right. I can create something that will boost the spell, but you have to do the magical stuff because I'm the engineer. So... So the two of you just spend like a eh, half hour, an hour working while I don't know what the others do. Yeah, Sir Ethel's just kind of vibing. Actually, no, he's pretty sad. So he's vibing, but sad. He's sad vibing. Oh, no. Aww. Gwen, go prattle at him. You know, Gwen is taking notes. He's listening fascinated to everything you say. And he has a notebook out and he's just like taking massive notes. This is like class, but better. You don't understand any of it. 100%. Because it's completely out of your wheelhouse. But that doesn't mean I'm not taking notes about it, because it's cool. About an hour later, you think that you've got it working. Now, I'll point out that you actually have two bracers that you can use in the party, because Viernan has a bracer as well as yours. Mm. And you can also still detect portals and things while you're out. Who is going to be doing this with you guys? It sounds like Viernan is definitely going to be helping out, because he's been, he's the only one that's seen it. So what are Gwen and Serathiel doing? Sounds like Serathiel's just vibing. Yeah, sad vibes. I feel like I want to help, but I, I don't think I, I can. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I keep offering to help. Chaz and <laughs> Allfighter are both like, oh, no, it's fine, it's fine. I'm going to say that probably, Chaz, you're put on Gwen watching duty <laughs> so that he doesn't interfere and distract anybody. Yeah, instead, he decides to distract Gwen with, so have you come up with a name for your stuff yet? Oh my gosh. I know, right? Just like the biggest, starriest eyes. I hadn't even- You can do that? That's like one of the, like, the wizards from the tales. Yeah, you can. In fact, you totally can. He taps Lotus like, I, I, why do you think I named her Lotus? Because she's adorable and beautiful, just like Lotuses are. I can't, you know, honestly, I kind of thought she came with that name. Like, I didn't think you named her, but it makes a lot of sense now that you say it. You thought I made her prename? What? I don't, I don't know. I just, she seems so lifelike. I, what do you think a good name for the staff would be? Well, I mean, obviously, nothing as grand or amazing as um, your last name, which is pretty cool. It is a pretty cool last name. It doesn't really fit me, though. Yeah, I don't have one. It doesn't make any sense. You don't have a last name? No. Can I borrow yours? I d- no. I don't, I don't think you're allowed to do that. that. It's a family thing. Okay, right. Went right over his head. Oh, adorable. All right, yes. Right. But anyway, something cool like that. Why don't you think it suits you? Well, it was my mom's name, and it made sense for her, because she was a cool warrior like Serathiel. She, like, had a sword, and she fought people in battle. That's where she died. But it was a cool last name, but it's just, I don't think it really works for me, because I've never held a sword. I can't even pick up a sword. I tried once, and it was it was really heavy. Yeah, right, because you're a wizard, Gwen. Of course you can't pick I up just, a sword. I don't know. I thought everyone could pick up a sword, but then I didn't realize they weighed, like, 50 pounds. They are really heavy. That's why I made armor to pick it up. Yeah, that's a good point. I bet you there's a spell that lets you summon like a magical sword. I'm going to look into that. Well, I mean, you, there's still time for you to become a great warrior. I mean, magic is just as powerful as any sword. I just sort of like slump. Yeah, but every time I attempt to summon magic, it doesn't go so well. I mean, you saw the thing with the webs. It wasn't great. Ah! I thought it was going to be really cool, but it was it was great. I feel like it's more application, right? It's not really the spell or the magic that failed. It was just not what was needed at the time. So you're saying it was that I'm a failure, no, not the spell. No, that is not at all what I'm saying. I'm saying you picked the wrong spell. Oh, because <laughs> it sounds a lot like you're saying that I'm a failure. So I you know. wouldn't. It's okay. It's just, you know, like a lot of my professors oh, say that, what? but what? it's just- Which which professors are telling you this? Oh, uh, Professor Albright. <gasps> what? That's terrible. Why would they say that? You have so much potential, Gwen. I like perk up. Oh, no one's ever been this nice to me. That's not true. I feel like people are often this nice to him because he's so sad and like <laughs> pathetic looking. Sarathiel in the back says, I can show you how to use a sword. Oh. It's not that hard. You just need you just need to train a little bit. Uh, I turn around. Wait, uh, what? Uh, no, but I 
I don't think you understand, Sir Althiel. I can't take it Jazz is behind him, like, doing the, like, nope, nope gesture, like, nope, don't. That goes right over Sir Althiel's head. He's like, you realize that's true of literally everyone until they practice enough, right? That's how training works. I guess. Yeah, but consider he'd also pick it up and die. Why? Do you see how twiggy he is? Look at him! You just have to train. That's, what do you think training is, Chazimir? <laughs> just lift up his little arm and drop it again. Like, look, there's nothing going on here. It's just some basic sp- strength and dexterity training. He'll be fine. Would you really teach me how to get a sword? Oh, I'm so excited. I've always wanted to pick up a sword. This is gonna go so bad. Oh, no. He says, oh, I don't have a problem with it. I'm not sure if I'll be allowed to. My face falls, and I'm like, wait, no. I'm gonna ask Viernan. Viernan will let me. I go over and bother Viernan. Viernan's busy! <laughs> This is good. Let me make a concentration roll to ignore you. <laughs> <laughs> they manage, and Chaz, you manage to come back over and redistract Gwen. No, 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 let's let's not bother Viernan right now. Let's just imagine. Let's use our imaginations with Sarathiel and imagine what a sword and training you would be like. Uh, bad? He <laughs> says so you wouldn't go straight to a great sword. With your build, you'd probably be better suited with a rapier or something of that nature. Chaz pulls a dagger out of his boot. He's like, or you could start with daggers. You can throw them. I know how to get a... Oh, I don't know how to throw a dagger. Or you could could train how to use a a quarterstaff as a melee weapon. And now it has gears, so you can whack them in the face with gears. That's so cool. I never really considered hitting someone with this before. That's what it's for. Chaz is just like, oh. Well, I don't really like to think about hitting people. That just seems wrong. You, You cast spells that set them on fire? Yeah, well, that's different, you know. How is it different? It's from far away, so, oh. you know, that's wh- that's how. Also, I don't actually typically cast spells to h- set them on fire. Normally, I set spells to set the area on fire, and they just happen to be oh, in the area, right. okay. which isn't directly my mm. fault. That is what they call, I believe, plausible deniability, which is not a word that Serathiel should know. <laughs> what? H- how do you know that word? What one? Plausible? Oh my god, he already forgot. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he's already forgotten what he was talking about. Oh my god, I can't believe that you knew that word and then you forgot. Amazing. That's just delicious. <laughs> that you just can just do that. Do what? Well, wait, what are we doing? Oh my god. Just like that. The spell is taking a long time to cast. Is. Yep. So because this is a more difficult version of the locate object spell, it's going to take longer than the usual 10 minute concentration time to actually find things. After about like 20, 25 minutes, we at least know it's somewhere on the north bank, but it's it's close to the river. They think that we can probably track it using the modified bracer now. That'll kind of ping us as we get closer. And I modified it so there's a little red arrow that goes here, here. Just indicator, indicator, indicator. Beep, beep, heep. It feels like we should go. Yeah, let's go. You guys are going to head across the river. The easiest way to do that is via the moon bridge again. Vernon's leading the way. This is his way home normally because he lives on the north bank. He's trying to kind of cheer Serathiel back up. He knows it's a little superficial. It's not the conversation that he'd promised, but we'll get to um, see the moon bridge at night. He does not say anything. You were excited about seeing the city the other day, and this is one of the prettier things in it. He continues to not say anything. Serathiel, I know why you're upset. Those questions are dangerous. They're dangerous for you, and they're dangerous for the others. And I, I should hope want- so, because I can't think of a good reason why I'm being kept as a prisoner otherwise. So I've never been put on trial. I've never actually committed any crimes. So I should hope that there's a very good explanation. But it's fine. We'll talk about it later. I promise you that there is, but I'm limited in what I can tell you. I know you're tired of hearing it, but it is for your safety. Well, I feel very safe. Chaz interrupts like, great, because this is a great spot to make out. Look at this view. And it is pretty. He's never seen the moon bridge. Uh, well, you saw it during the day, but you, c- you can barely see it during the day. Chaz is going to be a uh, sightseer. He's just like the Taurus. He's like, ooh, ooh, look at this. Ooh, it's so shiny. It's just to work, shall we? Boring. All right. We'll see it on the way back, I'm sure. Come on. It should be this way. The location seems to be somewhere on the river edge of the North Bank. Unlike when you went to the market, which was more of a straight shot. This is more toward the west of the city, toward the older parts of the city. 
It's not in the best area of the city, but it's not- Describe the architecture around because Chaz is very interested. (laughs) Does Silvery Moon have slums? (laughs) It's not really a slum. Like, And if there were slums, it would probably be in the South Bank, frankly, because it's not really that kind of a place. But this is definitely more of the like kind of tradesman's area. So this is really, it's not like the the nobles classes further in the north of the city or any of the fancy housing, It, but it is still nice. Silvery Moon as a city is very aesthetic. As soon as you said it was not like, nobles don't live there, Chaz is like, I love it here. Well, I got some bad news for you about Vernon's family. I feel like he says that directly to Vernon too. He's just like, oh, I love this place, not a noble in sight. <laughs> no, V, no, don't tell me. No, please. I mean, not exactly. Oh, God. My my family used to be, but not in a long time. Not in a few generations. Oh, that explains the connections. All right, all right. I take it back. I am no longer excited. There is a noble right here. (laughs) Not a noble. (laughs) Close enough. To be fair, he really isn't. Any of the nobility in the family was like two generations ago before his parents, you know, had a billion kids and brought shame on the family name. But, you know, we're not here to talk Silvery Moon politics. We're here to try to find a mole. Indeed. Yeah, you head further in to the city. You're getting a little bit further away from the river, like a block or two away. Um, The houses are a little bit nicer here than they had been before. But some of the riverfront houses are quite nice because riverfront property. Chaz just like glares at those, just like, ugh. You do finally come to one block and it it's not it's not anything big or flashy. It's just a small row house that it leads you to. The beeping does, right? The sonar beeping is what leads us there. The beep 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 on the bracer. Yeah, I mean it, it's not really like beep 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 because that wouldn't be very <laughs> subtle, but it's, you know, flashing. But yeah, yeah, you're you're led to one particular row house. So, how do you want to approach? St- at least Rathiel's just straight up going to knock on the door unless someone tells him to stop. Like, <laughs> Definitely don't do that. Why not? It's a house. Knock on the door. Someone could be inside. We're trying to investigate. Yes, we have to get invested to go inside it. To get to investigate, we have to go inside. No. We- Why do you want to break in? That's illegal. You can't do that. Oh my god. There are other ways, Rathiel. You don't have to break in. We can just look around the house. But it's inside, isn't it? Can we do like an investigation check just to like, look at the outside and see if you see anything suspicious? I want to check for traps. I want to check for clues. Anything. Oh, no. All right. Well, I have proficiency investigation, so let me try. Oh, whoa. Nope. Okay. Nothing can help with a natural three. <laughs> oh, my God. It's on brand. I really want to have Serathiel roll. Nope. Bunch of dumbasses. Serathiel is going to once again suggest knocking on the door. Vernon points out that literally all of the lights are out and it looks rather abandoned, like somebody hasn't been here all day. Well, good. We can knock and make sure no one's in there. And then if they're not, we can just bust open the door because it's abandoned and it's fine. I don't feel like that's a good idea. Why? Well, it's an alternative. We rolled a six, of ni- a nine, a ten, and a three. Like, what do you want? I have an alternative. Oh, no. It is magic. Of course. Okay, no, this one's not bad. What if we just, I I took Detect Magic. Well, there is definitely a lot of magic. (laughs) Like, it's Silvery Moon. Also, there's somebody standing right next to you with a divination bracer on right now. Giant enchanted sword over a back, you know. A little bit of feedback on this. Oh, oh boy. Oh, my head hurts. You do sense there's some spell around the front door. Probably knocking on it wouldn't be a good idea. You definitely get a whiff of abjuration magic, too. I like look around everybody else and I'm like, I'm thinking we don't want to knock on the door. There's some sort of ward it looks like, maybe? I think if we touch it, it might send out a signal or, or blow up. One of the two. Hmm. If it's rigged like that, I wonder if anybody is nearby. Vernon was just going to suggest maybe you try going around the back before you light up the street with fire and bright lights and things. Yeah, I think we should go around the back, but I actually have a second plan. The second plan is we send my spider in. Cool. Well, I have Lotus and you have Roger. Roger! I bring out Roger with a flourish. There he is. There he is. I pet his little head. So I think sort of stares longingly. He's like, I want a cat. This is... This is a spider. It's just, okay. I put Roger on the door and I'm like, we're at the back, right? Yeah. I'm going to put him at like the foot of the door. Go! Tell us what you see. I'm going to leave Lotus too. I'm like, just in case as sort of like a sentry. 
So it sounds like we're sending Roger in, but leaving Lotus out. Sounds good. So I feel like I take up a cross leg and pose the floor, and I just like connect with Roger. Are we just going to leave him on the floor like that? At least until we know it's inside, I suppose. I'm sure it's fine. I guess. So Roger doesn't really find anybody home. It seems like nobody's been home in a day, maybe a little longer. What's it like inside? Is there anything weird? It's creepy? Is there like a blood trail? It's a house. Does it look like someone lives there? Yeah, I mean, it looks like it was lived in. Okay. Can I find like a desk? Because Roger's looking for like the files, right? Yeah, it's going to take you a while if you're using Roger to try to find what you're looking for. Right. That's true. That's a good point. You don't see anybody in the house, which was your primary objective, and you can't hear anybody in the house, which was your secondary objective. I suppose that's fair. After a couple of minutes, like, Chaz just sort of taps and like, all right, Earth to Gwen, come back now. And I'm going to like be like, start off and like, be like, ah, in deep spider mode there, man. Come on, you can't just shake a man out of his trance. I get up kind of stiffly and like, cool, that's always an experience. Well, it doesn't seem like there's anybody in the house. Roger didn't find anything or see anything. So, I mean, I guess we can go in. Great. So Arthiel checks the handle to see if it's unlocked. Oh, God. Wait, we didn't check the door if it was warded. <laughs> you still have the tech to magic active, technically. It lasts for 10 minutes, so. Yep. Oh, that's a good point. This one was fine. They didn't think anyone would go around the back. Okay, so Arthiel checks the handle to see if it's unlocked. It wasn't unlocked, but I'm sure that Chaz can do something about that. I have Deeves Tools proficiency, so I can just... Do you want me to roll for something? Uh-huh. It's a sleight of hand check. Hey! Finally, a good roll. There we go. God, I'm just glad that Viernan doesn't have to be like, guys, there's a trick to these doors. All right, so we break and enter. Serathiel goes in first. He knows his place. He's the tank here. Like I said, it's a pretty normal house. Looks like whoever lived here maybe left in a bit of a hurry. Hmm. Stuff doesn't seem like it's quite in where it should go. I think there's like some bowls scattered around and papers are a little bit messy. But you're gonna have to look to try to find an office and whatnot. We have the bracer, right? It should be leading us, theoretically. It stopped beeping when we got into the general vicinity. Okay. All right, I'm gonna roll an investigation. Why not? All of you are welcome to. Hey! You find the office, and it's a bit of a mess. Looks like they were looking for some stuff, you know, burning some files in the fireplace. There's some paper around, and Viernan wanders in and is looking around because he at least has familiarity with what the forms look like and manages to find a page that had probably fallen out of the file. He does. I'm the one who rolled the 17. Yes, but you found a lot of other stuff. You found the office easily. I'm just going to underline burning files. It doesn't look like they're actually burning, like, the files. Oh, but that's still, they're trying to cover up shit. Yeah, so I actually had something specific that you found, Seraphiel. So while Viernan finds this page that he's used to seeing... You find the remains of a letter in the fireplace, and you find a envelope that had fallen off the desk. Oh, I'm for sure going to read the letter. And it's not as hard as it used to be for reasons that are not immediately clear to Serathiel. And to be clear, Serathiel is going to keep this quiet. He wants to read it first. Fair. So there's a scrap of parchment that you find near the hearth that seems like it was probably part of a bundle of letters. And the envelope that you found with it has a wax seal. The seal's broken, and it has the um, image of a flaming star on it. Hmm. Interesting. The letter is mostly singed. Uh, you can't really read a lot of it. But I will, I guess, DM you what you can read out of it. Please do. <laughs> <laughs> Secret secrets. I mean, you said that Serathiel's kind of keeping it close to the chest. 90% chance he's going to tell them immediately after, but just on like the 1% chance he doesn't want to tell anyone, I'm keeping it on the DL for now. But like I said, most probably he's probably going to share it afterward. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Hmm. Hmm. All right, yeah, this is, he's going to share it. Serathiel spends a minute crouched at the fireplace, and then eventually he starts reading out loud. Your cover is nearly blown. I can't believe you and Peter were so sloppy with that explosion. I expect better work in the future. Get me the files and I'll overlook this incompetence or something. Bring the files to the usual place on midsummer. If your cover is still intact, it should then be simple matter to go through a portal. Through a portal. Avoid unnecessary contact with the handler and his charge. The files will tell us all we need to know for now. I don't need to tell you what will happen if you read them or fail me a second time. 
I'm going to go ahead and like jump on this surprising leaps of intellectual connections that he's making tonight. Vernon is definitely more interested in that than the page that he's found. He kind of sticks the page in one of his pockets. He says, so this is implying that whoever instigated this explosion is somehow using the portals as travel? Sarathia, you can read? I, yes. Oh. And you can connect information? Wow. Midsummer. Is that the name of a street? No, um, the holiday. Midsummer. How far away is it from Midsummer, DM? Only a day or two. What a coincidence! Avoid unnecessary contact with the headline is charged. That's, that's me and you, Vannon. Yeah. Oh my god, he's connecting all the dots. Legitimately, you've never seen him make these many intellectual deductions before. This is pretty startling, actually. He's just staring like, what? Serathiel, I need to see the mark. What? I need to see your mark. Uh, what? Uh, now? Yes. Uh, all right. He's a little hesitant because he's like, he, he, they could theoretically be attacked at any minute, but you know, okay. Just, you've been rubbing at your neck. I just want to see that, please. <laughs> all right. He pulls off a part of the chain shirt and pulls it down across his collar. Just give me a moment. And he rummages in his bag and finds something. Is this, your armor's chafing you? I, I suppose a little. It's really not that big of a deal. Yeah. It's not, it doesn't hurt or anything, if that's what you're concerned. And then he realizes, no, of course that's not what you're concerned about. You're worried about this thing. Yes, I am. And he pulls out some bandaging so he can actually make a little pad or something so that it won't rub as much. I've told you, it's important and it keeps you safe. He has an eight int at the moment, so he's starting to like piece things together. Yeah. Like, Mark, get chafe. Dumb go by. He's finally starting to p put the shit together. He's like, yeah, r uh, right. But he also doesn't say anything about it. Yeah. Chaz is still alarmed. Wait, what? What? <laughs> the, what? What's going on? Explain in a minute. So he patches it up and makes it so that it's not chafing as badly. It still rubs a little bit, but it's much better than it had been. It's not a permanent solution, but it will at least help for now. Yeah. Serathiel doesn't quite know how to feel about it. I promise you I will explain later as much as I can. He doesn't say anything. In the meantime, can the rest of us do investigation checks? Yeah, go for it. You're just continuing to look around the room. Yeah. All right. Well, that was really weird. I'm going to investigate. That's my job. That's what I like to do. I mm, Too serious. Goodbye. Also, if there's anything locked in the room, let me know, because I want to bust that lock open. <laughs> <laughs> so you find the cover of Viernan's file had apparently fallen out or been dislodged somehow. Ooh, confidential file. Ooh. So you found his case file cover, and you found this rather upsetting letter that pieces together an outside force who's interested in Serathiel and Viernan for some reason. The rest of you seem to just kind of be peripheral in this case. They've got access to portal technology, and they're meeting somebody in a few days. So it sounds like if you head back to AppTap, check the personnel files for this address, you might be able to figure out who the mole is. Hey everyone, Val here. Thank you for tuning in to the latest episode of Crit Fail Club, Restoration. If you can't wait to hear what happens next, check out our Discord server for episodes in pre-release, or to listen in live as we record. You can join us by going to bit.ly slash cfcdiscord. For more information on the show, character biographies, and links to social media, head to our website, critfail.club or critfailclub.com. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr. We don't advertise at all, so if you like what you hear, tell a friend who might also enjoy the show, post on social media about it, or leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. Full episodes are available on our YouTube channel, bit.ly slash cfc channel, or on other major podcast platforms. Thanks again for tuning in. <laughs>